Thank you. My name is Kelly, and I'm kind of a nobody in all this. Um, I live on William Street, which I don't think is going to be affected unless they put it under that million dollar sidewalk that they just put in, that might fill the pump. <laughs> um, I want to address a couple things. Uh, one is infrastructure failure. And um, Mr. Quarterman held up a sign that showed some of the waterways, I think. And I, you don't have the map up, so I, I don't know for sure, but of the 500 miles, uh, with the Itchnatuckme, the Swanee River, Madison, Blue Springs. Um, That's south of the Walls area, but yes, go ahead. Would, would any of those areas be affected as well if, if there was an infrastructure failure? And what about the fault line that runs through, uh, you know, it passes through Leon County, Jefferson County and Madison County, Florida. If there were pipeline failure at, at that point, would that be a concern of any geologists touched on that? There's plenty of concerns. Actually, a bunch of publications about this already are people getting uh, getting into the papers, making comments. It's more uh, the, the issue of karst topography with sinkholes. Like uh, Mr. Rogers uh, mentioned, uh, the pipeline would be running uh, through an area of his property where there is actually active karst topography where you have the potential of widening or opening sinkholes and where you essentially can imagine a scenario, and there's plenty of those. Also in the area where the pipeline would go right underneath the, the, the Suwannee River or the Santa Fe River, uh, there are certain areas that are really of extreme concern. Uh, at this point, they're still just talking about possibly rerouting it if they're catching it early on so they don't have the high risk. From my point of view, we shouldn't be building this in the first place, as you well know, but yes, there are uh, immense concerns uh, in terms of geology. And uh, I have an article here with you that uh, with me I can share with you later on if you like. Uh, they are up in arms essentially on the Santa Fe River because it would be going right through an area where geologists are saying this is completely insane because the ground is really not stable. So if you have a 36 inch pipeline with more than 1 billion cubic feet of natural gas go through it, and all of a sudden you have, which can all of a sudden happen as we well know, the sinkhole can open or widen. You can imagine what particularly catastrophic circumstance can easily develop. The thing is that we are blind and we are deaf in a certain sense when it comes to listening and seeing the signs on the wall ultimately. And that's what I would I'd like us to understand is that we do not have to do this. We don't have to risk our life. That is, I'm not trying to have this Armageddon thing going here. It's just if we're completely behind in, in, in terms of our intellectual and political development to realize that this is really too late to invest in these kinds of pipelines. We should be investing, as some of the utility companies may be doing because they have to, but they're also starting to do it now because they're realizing they must if they, have to, if they want to survive. But we have still these entities that don't understand the larger picture. And so your concerns are very valid, in this, uh, not so much in terms of fault lines, but mainly about karst topography. Absolutely. Also, you know, if the 500 miles were to go on without a hitch, nothing happened. Where they're fracturing these shales to obtain this gas, they are raping, you right. said violating, they are raping the land at these shales. And if you do want to see something sickening, watch Gasland 1 and 2 and see where that dirt, I would call it dirty blood money, is going to get piped through the 500 miles. Excellent point. Let me say one thing to this. There's this term called not in my backyard, right? Oh, yes. We have to get beyond this thinking. We really do. In, in many ways, of course, our first concern is our own backyard or the backyard of our neighbors. But we all are, with my exception, U.S. citizens. And we should be watching out for our fellow citizens in places from Montana down to Texas to upstate New York and elsewhere. When you, when you are realizing we are, to use the term, literally raping the land for finite source, in 20 or 30 years this is all going to be history and we're going to look at an infrastructure that has no use, we have missed the train, the train that's already running in so many places, has started to run in places in the United States of America too, but there are these encrusted structures refusing to take on the responsibility of 
Let's use this term, good stewardship. We are in the Bible Belt for crying out loud. That's a Christian principle. Stewardship. Why are we not doing it? And it's so simple. It doesn't go from today to tomorrow, but it's so simple. Honestly. It hurts me to see that we have so many issues with this. We shouldn't. I should be having a cup of coffee with Mr. Slaughter and Mr. Rogers and Mr. Ben and everyone else this afternoon in about an hour and say, okay, let's do this. And Carol and everyone else can join too. We can. But we're somehow stuck somewhere there. We're like we're doing this tug of war where there you have one party on one side and the other party on the other side. We should be going all to the same side of that and then pull that car out of the mud. That's all it takes, guys. It really is all it takes. I may be naive, man. I'm an optimist for sure, but I know we can do it. All right. What is the material of this pipeline and the pressure on it? I'm afraid I don't have the technological or the, uh, the information on it. The material certainly is going to be uh, not plastic. And uh, they have, uh, Carol, do you know a little bit about this uh, in terms of the seams and, uh, and uh, the pipeline material and everything else? I'd rather not say anything other than. devaluation of our properties so that way they can reduce the um, payments to affected property owners mm -hmm. as minimally as they can get away with. So they're, you know, they're going to shortchange the installation and they're going to shortchange the people who are already being violated. Many of these people who are in the path of the pipeline have already been taken advantage of 50 something years ago and now their grandchildren are fighting another pipeline. And once this one goes in, then we're going to become the pipeline state because we were easy and we were convenient. And now the next pipeline is going to go through Lowndes County again because we didn't stand up and fight against this doggone thing. But if we don't do something today, there's going to be another one and another one. Already they are approving gas exports to company of countries that do not um, participate in free trade agreements. Their sole goal is to get this to export stations and then get it out of this country. And they're going to do it on the backs of the citizens of Lowndes County if we don't do something against it. Other people who haven't had the chance to ask questions or to make comments? Let me add one thing to what Carol just said. Uh, I was at a commission meeting uh, a couple of months ago, and I was I was getting the, the sales pitch about they were going to use a lot of uh, uh, workers from this area, <clears throat> spend a lot of money here. Uh, I read an article, a couple articles on this construction of the pipeline. This is highly specialized. The people that put this pipeline in are highly specialized. I dare say we don't have anybody here that could do that. Now they may use some shovel men out there at minimum wage or maybe a bulldozer operator that can push dirt maybe $15, $20 an hour. But the installation of this pipeline, if we use local people, we're going to have an explosion for sure. Now, I've read several articles on it. If you don't believe it, look it up and read it for yourself. They're not going to spend any money here. You can forget that. I'm a land surveyor. They haven't called me. <laughs> if I could just add one thing um, onto that as well. Uh, we were fortunate enough, uh, fortunate is the word, but we attended a number of the single trail open houses. And um, one of the things we did before we went is we printed out the Spectra Energy Safety Record. And you can look through their fines, millions of dollars worth of fines, and I think the majority of those were corrosion, which to me um, just implies an act of negligence, really, on their part, um, just to add on that. Um, quick add-on for me, too. 
just like these uh, false promises of jobs and only get those jobs if you have to specialize. I love this thing when they say, well, it's going to be American steel and not Chinese steel. Uh, you can keep your cigarette, sorry, you can keep your cigarette, I don't want to have your pipeline, it doesn't matter if it's made in the United States or in China, in the end it's really just a way to convince you this is good for America because we're using American steel, but the whole concept is flawed from start to finish regardless. But don't let yourself be distracted by these little tiny you know, bubbles or these bulletin points. Oh, it's American steel. Well, that's an important thing. We need to have American steel for construction of houses or bridges and everything else, but I'm sorry, that's a trick to get you in, uh, convinced that this is a good fit. Okay. Any other people who wanted to make comments who haven't had a chance yet? Um, I think we're ready for our conclusions then. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everyone.